Setting the capture method on your Stripe payment intents puts you more in control over how funds are collected from your customers. In this video, you'll learn about the automatic and automatic async capture method and see how they can affect your Stripe integration. To see how the automatic async capture method works, I'm going to use a test customer I created inside of my sandbox. Now from this view, I'm going to need to get the customer ID. And if I scroll down to the payment methods, I'm going to need to get the ID of one of these payment methods as well. Now in the terminal, I'm going to use a Stripe CLI and I'm going to create a new payment intent. This payment is going to be for $119.99 in US currency. Notice I'm attaching the customer as well as the customer's payment method. And I'm also setting the capture method to automatic. Now if I hit enter, I should get a response back really quickly from the CLI. But now let's head back to the dashboard and see what it looks like. I'm going to go to transactions. And here's the transaction amount for $119.99. Now I want to see the events for this payment. So I'm going to click on events in Workbench. Now I'm going to refresh this. And you can see I have three events that were just triggered. Payment intent created, charge succeeded, and payment intent succeeded. If I click on payment intent succeeded, I can scroll down and take a look at the event data. Notice the capture method is set to automatic and the amount received was $119.99. So in that one call to the Stripe API, we were able to authorize and capture the funds. Let's see what happens if we switch to automatic async. I'm going to head back over to the terminal and clear my screen. Now I'm going to set the capture method to automatic async. I'm going to execute the command. And now let's head back again to the Stripe dashboard. Let's close Workbench for a second and head back to Transactions. Now we should see our second transaction here, but this one was executed with automatic async. I'm going to open up the events page again. Now let's hit the refresh button to get the latest events. One thing you'll notice is that we now have four events that got fired. Payment intent created, charge succeeded, payment intent succeeded, and also charge updated. One of the things you'll notice that's different is if we head to charge succeeded and we take a look at this payload, even though this charge succeeded event fired, the balance transaction property is null. One of the reasons that happens is because with automatic async, the authorization and the capture steps for collecting payments are actually executed at the same time. If we head over to the charge updated event, or we'll scroll down and look at this event object, we'll see the balance transaction property for this one is populated. And that's because the charge details were updated later on after the funds capture was completed asynchronously. Because the capture ran asynchronously in the background, this should help reduce the latency for payment intent comp. The automatic async capture method has been made the default in the latest versions of the Stripe API. That means that your integration may only require minor updates, if any at all, to take advantage of this new capability. Now, if you want to learn more about capture methods and payment intents, I definitely recommend that you check out the Stripe documentation. And of course, please take a look at some of the other amazing videos that we're building here on the Stripe Developers YouTube channel.